OK, so now we're back in the office, and we're ready to process our data that we collected out in the field earlier. So obviously, first, we're going to bring in our data. And then we're going to use a software called Sonar Tracks. It's Sonar TRX. And we're going to import our data that we collected. On top of bringing in the traditional sonar points, it's also bringing in all of that side scan data that we uh, took in the field as well, which we can use to process out um, our submerged vegetation and bottom hardness data. So it's done loading and processing. So we can go ahead and view and edit the data. In this view, you can see our transects that we drove in the field. And uh, the highlighted part is basically the part that'll be in the first part of the chart that we can see. Um, the color schemes that you see here um, are basically reflecting um, your bottom depths and also uh, kind of some noise that's in the, in the uh, water column itself. So if we move a little further away from the original spot, you can start to see that it's got a very jagged appearance here. So the, the jagged appearance is actually the submerged vegetation. So you're seeing the tops of the submerged vegetation. You can see that this area has much less submerged vegetation compared to the rest of it. Um, in the, the actual bottom that we're going to use for depth, there's a very small hard to see section of line that, where it's classified out the actual bottom. So in general, the data looks pretty good through here. As long as we're confident that there's not any um, glaring errors in the data, we'll go ahead and export the data out. The data exports out as a CSV file. We'll go ahead and open that up into Excel. So here's our Excel file that of all of our points that we took earlier. You can see that we have our three fields that we told it to export out, which are our latitude, our longitude, and our depth field. We're going to want to add a field to this. Um, this step can either be done now, before you bring it into GIS, or afterward, after you're already in GIS, you can add a field then. Um, but we're going to go ahead and add it now, just for simplicity. And we are going to call this elevation. So we already have a depth, but we need to know what the actual elevation is. So on the day that this data was taken, the staff gauge that we measured in the field was at 39.4 feet above sea level. So we are going to take our 39.4 feet and subtract it from our depth data. And that's going to convert our depth into an actual elevation above sea level. So we're going to go ahead and save this as an Excel file. And we'll go ahead and open up ArcMap. So in ArcMap, we're gonna, we've already got it zoomed into, in, into Lake Carroll here. Um, the first thing that we're going to need to do is bring in that bathymetry data. I'm going to go to Add Data and navigate to where we just saved all of our data. And then we are going to display our XY data. Again, since we brought this data out of the unit as WGS 1984, again, we're going to have to assign it that in ArcGIS. And hit OK. And you'll see that our transects that we drove start showing up. Change the symbology so it's a little easier to see. And we'll want to export this data out to make it a data layer. The next part that we need to be able to do any kind of mapping and creating of uh, bathymetric data is we're going to need a perimeter of the lake. So that's what we've actually done here, is we have gone through and digitized the edge the water interface off of current aerials. You can see here in the green line all the way around the lake to create a consistent perimeter that has all of our G all of the bathymetry points that we brought in are inside of that polygon. So now that we have both our bathymetry points and a perimeter file, we can go ahead and start making our models. So the first part of creating the model 
is going to be to create a 10 model. So we'll go in and use the 3D analyst under the 10 options and create a 10. So first we go ahead and name what our output is going to be. And we can go ahead and bring in our, what our feature classes that we're going to use to create this 10. First one that we're going to use is the, X, the Beth Energy points that we created. If you're going to be using this, you have two options. You could just use it for depth, or you could use it for elevation. In our case, we're going to use elevation. And we're going to keep it as mass points and no tag field. Again, the other part that we need is that perimeter. So we will use the perimeter. And we're going to use a field that we have called DBS depth. Um, the DBS depth has been set to zero. That this is the zero depth of the entire uh, lake. So this can take a couple minutes to run. Uh, again, because it's using so many points and also a large area. Um, what a 10 model is doing is basically drawing triangles between neighbors of points and creating, uh, interpolating what's in between those points to create a 3D model. You can see the, the it shows you essentially where the various uh, elevations are and by changing the symbology you can create uh, you can kind of finer tune this product so that you can uh, see a little easier. Right now the changes in color is representing uh, about four and a half feet in between each one. From this point we're going to take our, our 10 model and we're going to go ahead and create contour lines out of it. So we'll use the surface contour and we'll bring in our Lake Carroll 10 that we just created. Um, so we're going to set the contour inter interval to 1, representing a 1-foot contour. Um, the base contour, we could set this to, to be that 39.4, which was, again, our, very, our surface level at the time. And then we can go ahead and create. So you can see kind of the, the one foot contours that have been created from this data. You can see the jaggedness of it. You can also see the relics of where the actual transects were. And again, this is partially because of it's not using a proximal tolerance, so it's just a direct representation of what the data was. In comparison, the data that we took using uh, our scripting here, you can see has created a much smoother and a, a bit better of a representation. Um, again, the relics of where the transect lines has largely disappeared, or at least diminished, and the quality of the product as far as a final uh, PDF map or uh, bathymetry map is, is much higher. So one thing that we'll want to do, or one of the most useful things out of creating a product like this, is to be able to use this 3D model to create um, calculations of the surface area and the volume of the water body. So this is very important, obviously, for uh, stormwater management, uh, water consumption use. A lot of lakes, rivers, things of that sort get used for public water supply, so you need to know how much is there. Um, also, if there was, say, a submerged aquatic vegetation that had taken over and they need to treat it with an aquatic herbicide, you need to know the volume of water that's there so that they know how to dilute all their products. So the first we will use is we're going to go in and use, under the functional surface tool set, we're going to use surface volume. So what this is going to allow us to do is look at our 10 model that we just created, and we're going to export out a text model, or a text file, and we're going to be calculating 
below the reference plane, and that plane height is going to be for the full water body, uh, the full water column that we collected, again using the gauge of 39.4 when we were out there. And this will pop pretty fast. So by bringing the data into Excel and looking at the results from the functional surface table, we can calculate out what the change in height is. So we can see that for a 4.2 foot change in the height of the water, we end up with uh, 36,800 cubic feet less of water in the, in the water body itself. And as far as the surface area of the lake, it would shrink down 306,000 square feet. So you're losing quite a bit of, of bank at losing four feet of actual water volume or water height. So um, it's a very valuable tool for modeling out uh, changes in depth for drought. If you also have the DEM data for the LIDAR of the surrounding area, you can do the same and model for what happens as things flood. So the results of this kind of work, we usually we put on our Tampa Bay Water Atlas. So the results of our mapping go into the advanced mapping application, which you can see by typing Carol, and then searching for Lake Carol, you can see that we offer lake bathymetry. So as you zoom in, you can see the bathymetry that was created for Lake Carroll here, also available for a number of other lakes here. Um, but the Atlas offers this as a way to get this data out to the public, which is very useful. So now you've seen the process of bathymetric mapping from c data collection in the field through data processing in the office, and also some of the products that you can create from it and the usefulness of this data. So now you can be better informed on the bathymetric process and also continue in the class exercise.